Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day four of Main Street Vegan Academy Week, and that means we are featuring graduates from the wonderful Main Street Vegan Academy founded by Victoria Moran, who kicked off this special week on Monday. You can see the replay just by going back a few days. And each day, the graduate has been also doing a wonderful demo. And today's recipe sounds amazing. It's a buckwheat and jackfruit pasta-like dish with thy daily bread. I can't wait to see what that all is all about. But today to introduce our special guest, we have another graduate from the Main Street Vegan Academy named Elaine Hutchinson. Please welcome her to the show. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, AJ. And I'm just so honored to introduce your guest this morning. I was a member of Main Street Vegan Academy with her. When I went into that program, I went in, I'm a copywriter, ghostwriter by trade. And I thought I was going to learn how to write better for my audience. And I came out uh, a wannabe historian, a historian in training, because I found aspects of the course touched me in such deep ways. Uh, but one of the best things was meeting your guest this morning. Um, she is, there's, it's, it's rare that you meet people that truly have a passion for what they do. And Colette loves making beautiful food that's beautiful for you. Um, she just adores it. I just wished I lived close enough to her to taste it. So um, that being said, I'd like to introduce my friend, the always amazing Colette Mott. Hi, Colette. Well, you've been on the show before. Yes, I have just almost a year ago. And thank you, Elaine, so much. Thank you, Elaine, for doing an amazing job with my website. So thank you. Um, yes, I was on nearly, uh, yeah, just over a year ago. Yeah. But Fantastic. I've moved, I've moved locations since. So even though I still have a very tiny kitchen, um, it's a little bit less tiny than the other one because the other one was like in a in a little corner cupboard and now at least I can spread out a little bit. That's fantastic. And so you live in the Netherlands. Well, how did you end up there? Oh, uh, well, I was born in Ireland um, and I moved to the Netherlands in 2000 um, and I married a, a Dutchman. We're not together now, but um, so and we had a daughter and that's basically, and I stayed. I've been here 12 years now. Um, and in between, we went to New Zealand. So I'm, I'm back now for five years. Fantastic. How easy or hard is it to be vegan there? Um, it's getting easier. It, well, it depends on the region, actually. Um, right now, I moved, um, I'm pretty isolated. And the region I moved to is, um, yeah, it is a little bit meat heavy and cheese heavy. Of course, that's the nature of being in Holland. Um, but in the major cities there, it's really, and also local supermarkets are really becoming more aware now. So it's really encouraging to see what's happening there. Um, and of course, there's a lot of vegan junk food, but it's a good transition. And it's, it's nice to see so many replacements coming in now. Yeah. That's Great. Did you take Main Street Vegan Academy in when it was offered in person or the virtual? No, I took it with Elaine just literally in February this year. So I'm I'm a newbie. <laughs> so yeah. Tell us about your experience there, what you learned, because you were already vegan when you attended, right? I was already vegan. And you know, I'm a little bit of a course junkie over the past sort of 22 years. My daughter is almost 22. And for the past 22 years, I have been uh, moving my way in through each course I could find that interests me. And I followed, um, I was doing a course, uh, the Integrative Nutrition, and Victoria Moran was one of our amazing lecturers, and she inspired me so much. And just how she presented what she said, how she said it, and everything about her just inspired me so much. So I started following her a little bit, not stalking, of course, just, just following. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, again, I was vegan already, but there was just something, um, I was vegan really for health and all about the nutrition, all about the health. And yes, of course, I adore animals. I have a dog. She's the love of my life. But there was something in my knowledge missing about the ethical part. And I just wanted to know more. Um, I also, as Elaine said, I love cooking and I love teaching. 
And I thought, well, maybe I don't know what's going to happen after this. Maybe I can put the two together and we'll see what happens. So I went in sort of open minded and oh, my gosh, it was just amazing. And I did get my eyes open with the ethical side and it just blew me away because I grew up on a dairy farm and that in itself, I, I just I, when I think about it. Um, so it really brought home a lot to me. And um, yeah, so it, it's amazing. And the, the teachers and the presenters there are second to none. I've, I've done so many courses through the years and this is the one. And I think what stood out to me most is I'm, um, yeah, I like personab uh, personability. And I think with Victoria's contribution and her um, just how she is throughout the course, it's just like she's one of us and how approachable she is and how it's, yeah. And, and it's small enough to be, um, you know, quite personal uh, in, in how many um, clients there are or students there are and the connections and Elaine, I wouldn't have met Elaine if, if I hadn't done it. So overall, it's, it's an amazing course and it, it is second to none of many that I've done. I'm so glad to hear about it. Well, we have a coupon in the show notes for, I believe it's 20% off for the October course if anybody's interested in checking out Main Street Vegan Academy. Yeah, it's, it's really, really worth it. I can't recommend it enough. Nice. Did you, was there any cooking element to the course? Uh, yeah, we had uh, Franz Constant, uh, Franz, is it Franz Constant? Um, Frank Costigan? Frank, yeah, because that's a really difficult one to get at. And um, yeah, she was on your show as well. So yeah, she did a really good uh, presentation. And there was uh, some really good nutritional information, some superb presenters with on it from the health scene as well. I mean, I, I draw a blank on remembering all of them. But uh, yes, the, the, the pres presenters, the teachers were fantastic. That is great. It sounds wonderful. Yeah. So what you're going to make for us today, that doesn't sound like typical uh, Holland food. No, it's, well, no, it's not. It's kind of typical me food because <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm a real, I, I wouldn't say I'm lazy in the kitchen. I love my kitchen. I love cooking. But I love to make it as simple as possible. And I, I don't do a lot of real, I, I love vol food volume. And I think what I cook generally is something that and I think you you share the same with me chef AJ and you love a lot of food and uh, if it's low calorie density yes you can have a lot of food so I don't eat out in restaurants because I don't think I'd ever get enough <laughs> so, yeah that's so true and I like I like I you know I like in my cooking to doing my washing and I'm not a great label checker and say, okay, separate that, separate that. Everything goes in together. It just gets done. And with me, I'm a real one pan dish girl. And um, anything that can go in the pan, I think uh, this is good for this. This is good for this. Yes, color, yes. I never really go out with a set flavor in mind. So it's a trial and error with me. And there's been a lot of errors too, because my daughter will testify for that. It's like, uh, uh that one, don't do that again. Um, so yes, my, my one pan dishes are experimental as I go and I love them. And that's just the way I eat. And the bread that I'm doing, I have it every day. I've been um, baking this kind of bread for, yeah, for more than a decade. And there are no two recipes the same. I, and I did write a recipe for this one, but generally everything that I make can be substituted for something else, or you can add to, and you can just personalize it and make it your own, which is what I've done. I'm glad to know there are other people that do laundry like me, just when the basket's full, just put it in. Yes, shameful. So it's not too kind on white things, so I pretend not to wear white. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wear things that can be uh, washed uh, at 60 degrees and everything goes in together. Yeah, that's great. Well, I love to see the recipe, buckwheat. Buckwheat and jackfruit, It's you're calling it pasta style. The reason I say pasta style is because I'm today I'm using... Um, all the ingredients I'm using, they're just really what I have in the fridge normally. If I don't have them, I can substitute them with anything else. 
I was initially going to do this with pasta and I love buckwheat. I had buckwheat in the freezer already batch cooked. So you know what? I'm going to use buckwheat and I'm going to use the Italian. The Italian bit is the seasoning and the tomato. So that's the only reason it's Italian style, but it can be substitute. You can do exactly the same um, and have it like a curry base and just change the seasoning and change the sauce. Sounds great. Can't wait to see it. But I'm going to start with the bread because I need it to sit for a little bit and then I'm going to do a cashew parmesan uh, topping for it. Okay, so the bread um, I've got, uh, this is my um, blender and I use this to mill the flour. So it's uh, oat, rolled oats, two cups of rolled oats. I think it's two cups. I don't measure, but it looks like two cups. <laughs> so I'm just going to make a little bit of noise. And that's it. So that's my oat flour. You can buy oat flour, but you know, why buy it when you can do this? Uh, and also some uh, rolled oats and sunflower seeds, cup, uh, about half cup of sunflower seeds. And I mean, you can use, literally use any nuts. I sometimes do crushed hazelnuts in this as well, which is nice. And a half a quarter cup of ground flax. And again, you can substitute the flax for um, chia, even hemp. Hemp is nice. Hemp's got a really nutty flavor. So just make sure they're well blended. And the reason I use a, um, a Pyrex bowl is so that you can look up at the bottom and see how well it's mixed. So you want to make sure that the seeds are getting all the way through. So and to this, I have uh, cinnamon. I think cinnamon should go with everything. There shouldn't be a day goes by that you don't have cinnamon. It's a really good metabolism booster. Um, it, it really stops your blood sugar level from spiking. Um, and it's just flavorful and it reminds me of my great aunt. Um, and also vanilla powder. Um, it's just pure vanilla powder. Vanilla powder is really expensive, but it is worth getting because it's just, uh, you know, it's so much better than uh, flavoring. Goes in. And you can, if you use salt, you can add a pinch of salt. I don't see why you should do that, but if you wanted to, you could. And then a half cup, uh, no, three quarters of a cup of carrots, um, shredded carrots. Well, they're not shredded, they're grated. And I'm just going to use a fork for this. And this is courgette. Now, I think in the recipe I put grated courgette, but I decided to dice it because, again, you can just change it up if you want. And, and courgette has got a different name in the United States. Uh, zucchini? Right. Yeah, zucchini. Okay, courgette. Yeah. Um, it's the same in New Zealand, actually. So um, you make sure that everything is in getting well blended or mixed. And again, you just check the bottom to make sure that it's, can you see okay there? I, I, maybe I should just tilt this. Yeah, that's over. better. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I should have done that at the beginning. Okay. So make sure this is. And um, if you wanted to put raisins or dried cranberries, apricots, dates, or whatever. The reason I don't is because I eat so much of it. And I tend not to like some things that are too sweet. And this is a great breakfast bread. I call it thy daily bread simply because I have it daily. Um, so, but you can add raisins or, you know, to sweeten it up. Right, and so that's my dried mix. And then to that, I will add um, banana, one ripe banana. Again, you can use more than one banana. I just, because I'm not doing it too sweet, just one banana and an apple. I think there shouldn't be a day goes by that you shouldn't have an apple as well. Cause <laughs> apples are, I think if there was one fruit that I had to eat for the rest of my life and couldn't eat anything else, it would have to be apple. Well, that's, that's where they get the saying an apple a day. Well, I, I, totally, I really, really agree. What um, kind of apples do you get in the Netherlands? Have you ever had something called the envy apple? The envy apple? No, no, I'm envious. Yeah, I, it's yeah. really good. It's my favorite. I'm curious, what 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 kind of apples do you get? Well, the, a lot of Royal Gala, um, um, Elstar, Gala, Fuji, John of Gold, 
Um, yeah, the, so the varieties isn't as much as they are, for example, in the UK. Um, but I, I, Gala is probably my favorite. And that's the one you get most. So here I've got um, two cups or almost two cups of a non-dairy milk. I'm using oat milk. I love oat milk. I love all things oat. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to use it all, but I will top it up if I need to. So I'm going to make some noise again. Are you just making noise? comes out like a like a very thin smoothie mix okay so you make a little well and add it a little bit at a time I'll leave that And you can use any milk at all, like uh, soya milk. I also love soya milk. I kind of alternate my milks with oat and soya. I, in fact, soya milk, I'm just so in love with soya milk and all things soya. Uh, so I'm glad I don't have any allergies to soya. I would be in trouble. Okay, so just check if there's any dry bits at the bottom. I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit more liquid because it will expand a little bit so I'm going to leave it to the side for a bit okay so it should be sort of about this texture and I'm going to leave it to the side because then it'll give it a chance to dry up a little bit and while it's there I'm going to make my cashew um, parmesan. So you just need uh, some cashews, about a quarter cup. And this, this is my second favorite um, little piece of apparatus. I don't have room in my kitchen for, me, for much. So tiny things are good. And this one is just like a little nut uh, grinder. That's cute. I've never seen one that quite that small. No, I've not seen them over here. I bought this in New Zealand and it's just been brilliant. But I, I used this a lot before I got the Nutribullet and uh, I just had to keep refilling and refilling because it's only tiny. And it just... Uh... So the consistency is like breadcrumbs, really. That doesn't fall down on my head. Okay, so we'll just use this container for that. And then to this, I will add onion powder, onion powder, um, nutritional yeast, and nutritional yeast is lovely. And you can just literally, you can sprinkle your nutritional yeast over the dish without any of the rest of it because the cashews are really quite high calorie dense. So, but if you didn't want that, you can just use the yeast. I've also used, um, this is called, uh, here it's called sacral and it's a samphire. So the, you know, the samphire, uh, the sea vegetable and it's dried and then used like a pepper mill. Um, and so all it is is sunfire, and it's a sunfire salt. So I'm just going to add this in. And mix it around. And we're just going to leave this until the uh, buckwheat is ready. So I'm going to... Get my, I think this can actually go on the baking tray now because it's, I'm gonna have to get it in the oven. Okay, so 
Okay, I use my cooker as a worktop. <laughs> I'm space managing. Okay, so we'll just put it out onto the baking sheet. I'm using a silicone baking sheet. Anyone has any questions? I'm happy to. Oh, sorry, I'm not even looking at the chat because I'm watching the presentations. Um, I, there's a comment from Angela. Like, did you have your daughter when you were 10 years old? Oh, bless you, Angela. <laughs> she says, you certainly live this lifestyle. You're vibrant, energetic. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, I, love, I love that tool you're using. I forget what it's called, but it's also good for when you chop onions. That's exactly what it's for. And then I realized that I could also mix cement with it or <laughs> smooth cement with it. Um, this is just like bricklaying. So you just want to put it in uh, like a rectangle. And depending on how thick you want the bread, uh, I personally like it quite thin because then it just gets, it bakes quicker. And uh, also if you have it really thin, you can then slice it this way and then have two flat pieces or just little strips. Yeah, this is a great tool. So professional. So you make that every day? It doesn't make enough to uh, to last oh, more than one day? I eat it every day. I don't make it every day. I, I always make sure there's some available. <laughs> so I make it once I, I cut it in four. And then once I come down to the last one, I will make another batch. That's exactly how I batch cook. I don't wait till the food is gone. I wait till I'm eating the last serving. Elaine says that she thinks it's called a baker's scraper. It's a kitchen scraper. Yeah. Nice. It's good because it doesn't accidentally cut the uh, silicon. Either. So when you uh, put them in four, I like to then just pick it up and move it a little bit so that it cooks better. You give it more of a chance to cook. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm not, I might be a perfectionist in many ways, but when it comes to things like chopping the same size, I'm not a perfectionist. I don't think things have to be always, you know. Well, that, look, that looks good. And, and uh, have you ever tried dehydrating it? I don't have a dehydrator. So well, therefore, no. <laughs> no, no, I... I I compete with the, what can go in my kitchen size-wise. So I'm going to put this in the oven um, at 170 to 180. I think that's 330, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Most baking is done at 350. Okay. So it depends on the size. And I just have to keep an eye on my oven. I, you know, the ovens I've used, they aren't all brilliant. Sorry, I have to keep an eye. Okay, so that's out of the way. Elaine, can you remind me that it's in the oven? <laughs> yeah, set a timer. Let's have all the viewers uh, help out today. Yeah. yeah. And just in case I have one already made, so in case something goes very wrong, uh, but hope not. Okay, so this is going to be my uh, jackfruit buckwheat. So as with everything, I always start and you I, too, Chef AJ, I think you start with the onion and garlic always, or use onion and garlic and everything. Gotta have an onion to start. I always say everything starts with an onion. Well, with me, it's not only everything starts with an onion, everything starts with a chopped tomato. And that goes for any kind of savory dish I'm making. I started doing that when I stopped eating oil. So uh, for cooking, I always start the pan sizzling with um, chopped tomato. So I just heat it a little bit. So one big chopped tomato. And you have to let me know also if the if the steam from the the smoke from the food is disrupting the camera because I'm I've got my computer in the corner, so I need to know if it is disrupted. That's a very pretty pan. What kind is it? 
it's a recycled material and the, it's supposed to be non-stick, vegan non-stick coating. Um, but I've, things have stuck on it, I have to say. <laughs> but what I, the trick I use is when something does get stuck on it, I turn the heating off and leave it for about 30 seconds or a minute and then it's, it comes off. I put the onions. And I will put in the ones that take the longest to cook first, and that's sweet potato. This one I'm using is a purple sweet potato. It's actually a little bit speckled in color. It's not totally purple and it's not totally white. So it's an unusual, I don't even know the name of it, but it very often you can only get the orange ones, but I was lucky this time to get the purple. I love those. Yeah, I love sweet potato. Sweet potato makes everything mushy and I love mushy food. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use some stock, vegetable stock, and this is from soup I made I make soup every day for lunch um, and I always drain off about this much, about a cup of the stock to use that evening for cooking. And next I will put in the leek. So this is probably one of my favorite green vegetables. It's not leafy greens, but it's, it's uh, the green, the green part of the leek is my favorite and I use it every day, uh, sometimes twice a day and I use it mostly for my soups in the, for lunchtime. Do you have trouble cleaning them? I know that if you buy them at Trader Joe's, they come clean, but they can be very dirty. Yeah, they can. I, I, I slit them down the middle. I cut them in half, slit them down the middle and then hold the top tight end as I run the tap down and I just go through with my fingers each uh, blade. I'm not going to use too much liquid because it's going to be some tomato in it as well. Okay, so uh, the jackfruit I'm going to put in now and I just wanted what I've done with the jackfruit. This is what jackfruit, if any, for anyone who doesn't know what jackfruit is, this is how it comes out of the can. And you can either just chop it or do what I've done. And that's like, I mashed it with a fork on the chopping board. That's called pulled. It, it's like a the substitute for pulled pork. Um, and it's kind of apparently got the same texture. I've never had pulled pork, but um, so that goes in now. You get a lot more, when you do it this way, you get a lot more volume out of one can than you would do with chopping it. The only um, problem I have mostly with cooking the way I do is because I like volume so much, I very often run out of space on my pan. <laughs> yeah, that's why you need a big pan. Yeah, I do have a bigger one than this uh, steel one, but it's just so heavy. I, I mean, I'm quite tiny, so it really, I really struggle to pick it up. Okay, so on top of this, I am going to put um, two cloves of garlic. And this is uh, two types of Italian mix. And I always get blended um, spices and herbs. And this one, the darker one is more of a, a, an Italian spice blend. And this is Italian herbs and also some smoked paprika. I know you like smoked paprika. I do, I think it might be my favorite spice. Yeah. You know, I have a drawer, I have a drawer full of spices and herbs, and I kind of rely on three, just three, I, I kind of use all the time. And that's Italian. Um, uh, it's called here a pit of mix, which is like a, a sharp, um, not so hot, but more spicy. And the other one is uh, the curry blend with turmeric and cumin, coriander, and black pepper, of course. So on top of that, I'm going to do some mushrooms. 
I just use white mushrooms. They're nutritionally the same as um, any of the more expensive ones. And you know, if you um, slice your mushrooms or not slice them, but maybe just have them and set them out in the sun for about 20 minutes, the vitamin D from the sun will boost their vitamin D content enormously. Did not know that. Yeah. So even the mushrooms can sunbathe. Okay, so in this goes the buckwheat. So this is already pre-cooked buckwheat. I normally batch cook buck a buckwheat in about this amount per little bag. Actually, I probably didn't need an hour at all. <laughs> this is going to be ready quite quickly. That's great. Well, this is what I said before. I, you know, I'm maybe a little bit of a lazy cook. I just like quick and easy. And the reason I don't have an instant part of that, I like to be around my food. I like to do it really quickly and to keep an eye on it and to work with it. But it doesn't take long. I mean, really, I can come in and and have dinner prepared in 20 minutes maximum. And uh, yeah, that works for me. Um, also red pepper, capsicum, and two of my favorite things, black beans. I absolutely love black beans. They really add texture. They add amazing nutrition and flavor and also garden peas i mean where would you be without garden peas in the freezer mm -hmm. uh you have a, you have a doggy i have a doggy love and my Mary says what is your doggy's name penny actually penny and poppy she gets called both <laughs> and she knows both of her names he knows, but she, yeah, she will answer to both. <laughs> or a little rascal. She's almost 11, but sometimes she's just like a puppy. That's adorable. Can we see her at the end of the show? Yeah, she's sleeping at the moment. But oh. yeah. well, if she hears, if, she, if she, the moment she senses a cucumber coming out of the fridge, she's up and ready. <laughs> she adores cucumber. Um, oh. So this is just a can of plain chopped tomatoes. So this will add a little bit of, so I don't need a sauce for this dish at all because the tomatoes really, and I'm gonna let them absorb a little bit, but at the end of the dish, it will be moist. So it, it really doesn't need sauce. I very seldom do sauces on my dishes because I my daughter is not really a sauce person. Um, and, she is partial to peanut butter. So I will, if she really needs a sauce or wants a sauce, I will put a teaspoon or two of peanut butter in a little dish. I will add hot water, a tiny bit of hot water and some uh, tomato puree and just uh, stir it. And it's a pourable sauce, peanut flavor. That's pretty cool that you have a cucumber alarm clock. Oh yeah. My goodness, it's, I think she, yeah, she must smell it as well. It's, I'm making a mess of my lovely cooker. Okay, so I'm gonna just put the rest of the tomato here. And then I'm just going to let it, put it down a little bit and let it simmer. Was the steam a little bit disruptive or not? No, no, it was fine from my end. Oh, good. Okay, so gosh, we're nearly uh, we're nearly ready. So, if there's any more questions, I'm happy to answer now, or I can let you uh, say hello to my dog. I'd love to say hello to you. I, know what, I do want to ask you a question on Main Street Vegan Academy. Of course. What was your favorite class? 
Oh, she has just turned the cooker off. <laughs> oh, she's cute. She looks like a miniature golden retriever. She is a, a mix between a golden retriever, Labrador, and poodle. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what was my favorite class? Um, gosh, that's a really good question. What was my favorite class? I think the, uh, the I don't remember her name now, the dietitian that was a, a registered dietitian. Elaine, do you remember her name? Yeah, she was fantastic. Really fantastic. Brenda Davis? Or? No, I don't think, no, it wasn't Brenda Davis. Oh my goodness. And Martin Rowe, Martin, that's Elaine's favorite, I know. Um, Martin, he was, I mean, he's, he's quite sciencey. So I'm, I'm really not a science person. So I really had to, to really stay awake to focus and concentrate, but he was, his presentation was superb. What kind of science did he present? Like plant-based nutrition or? No, statistics. Um, this was on animal cruelty and uh, statistics. Oh, there was another one, the, the fashion, the vegan fashion guy. Uh, he was amazing. He has a fashion line, a vegan fashion line. Wow. I can't remember his name. Well, she must get some great presenters. Yeah, they're really, really superb. She's, uh, and of course, when she presents herself, all of the things that she presented herself. And we did a little bit on Ayurveda and I absolutely adore Ayurveda. I have a huge interest in it. And uh, I practice some things myself from it. And uh, yeah. That, that's always really. How many people are in the course and do you guys like all stay connected afterwards? Uh, 33. And uh, is that right, Elaine? It was 33. Yeah. Um, there's um, a reunion actually this weekend. And in our group, I, I don't, I haven't been uh, connecting because of the time difference, but apparently there, there have been once a month meetings. And uh, Elaine and I catch up every week. So nice. a live viewer wants to know, is your dog plant-based? No. And I, the reason I think my daughter and my, I share my dog with my ex-husband. So I think there would be a lot of uh, comeback on putting her plant-based. Plus she's getting old. She's 11 almost. And she's got quite a, a sensitive stomach. And the other thing is when she's out walking, she... I could be giving her, you know, broccoli and cucumber only, and she would go out and she would eat other dogs' poo, and it sounds terrible, but she does. So she will somehow be getting other stuff in there too. So I, with her stomach, she's really sensitive, and I don't. She, it makes her sick whenever she eats something, but she doesn't learn. She'll go back and find it the next day again and eat it again. So she's a, yeah, she's a little bit of a scavenger. Yeah. Well, they're omnivores and I've tried so hard with every dog to make them a hundred percent vegan. And they just, like you say, when you do that, they go out and then they eat the dead animals they find out. So exactly. And, and you don't know what other dogs are being fed. And if they, you know, she, she eats other dogs poo. I don't know what makes her do that, but apparently I've, what I've started doing is uh, somebody told me to give her some banana and that will stop her from eating other dogs poo. I've done that, but it doesn't seem to stop her. Yeah. How long have you been plant-based, Colette? Um, I went uh, vegetarian in mid eighties. And um, then throughout the years, I, I felt much better on vegetarian. And uh, then I went completely vegan for a while because I went on Pritikin uh, regime. And uh, then I flitted back, I kept, being drawn back to cheese and uh, also fish. So I would have some fish and then I would think, okay, that's enough. I don't want any more for maybe the next month or so. And I would be completely vegan. And then I would fall back into the trap of fish or cheese and eggs for a while. And then um, I went completely vegan about maybe two and a half years ago. And then I was still uh, not SOS free and I had a chronic recurring skin condition 
And the moment I went SOS free, my skin cleared up and has not been uh, back. I haven't had the condition since. Well, I'm got, Dr. Alan Goldhammer would be pleased to know that. Yeah, it, it, it was just amazing as if by magic. But you know, if, if I'm chronically stressed, I can see something happening. And then I know to deal with the stress, it's not the diet. Nice, 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 nice. So when you eat your daily bread, is that more like a breakfast, a dessert? Both. <laughs> um, I, I have it with my, after my breakfast, actually, because I, I normally have um, overnight oats with wild blueberries and seeds and nuts and banana. And then after that, I will have my bread and I'll have mashed banana with mashed pear on top of that um, and the occasional rice cake i say the occasional that's not true many rice cakes um but rice cakes that are not flavored not salted not they've just got either they're made with corn or rice and that just seems to be that just satisfies me i i love them and um yeah so and then i'll have the bread sometimes as a, as a dessert after lunch or as a snack. It's just anytime, anyway, really, because it's just, it's all goodness, so. You know, we have a store, I just moved to Northern California, a store that we didn't have in Southern California called Rayleigh's, and I saw that Lundberg has these organic rice cakes, but they're not really, you know how rice cakes can be really thick, you don't want that much in your mouth, they're like thin, and the literally the only ingredient is organic brown rice. That's, that's what I get. I get that they're called corn thins. And uh, at most, they'll have maybe flaxseed in there, uh, but not much. But most of them are, are corn. And the rice cakes, you can get the buckwheat or rice. And uh, I get sometimes the little rectangle ones, which are also really thin, and they're rice and quinoa. So there's, yeah, they're ideal. And I, I love um, using frozen berries and soya yogurt and make that uh, mash it together and make it like an ice cream. And I put it on top of the rice cake. So it's just like eating ice cream and wafer. Wow. Cool. Uh, uh, Elaine says Joshua Catcher was the fashion guy. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Let's see. The bread is cooking nice, baking nicely. Oh, um, Susan says, what was the name of your skin condition? Oh, I had a uh, chronic eczema and uh, combined with herpes simplex virus. And I never knew which it was when it would surface. But the most chronic I had was, um, oh, maybe about eight years ago. Um, it was a rash that went all the way around from my neck, all around to, to my throat and to here. And it was a really hot summer and I just had to wear a scarf all the time and then it started to creep up here up to my chin and it, it was just horrendous and that I that was that was um eczema I'm sure that was eczema and then I started to get the herpes simplex on my face and once it started to come on my face it was it just didn't clear up until I went to SOS free Nice. Thank you. Uh, Lori wants to know what your exercise routine is. Um, I exercise every day. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty active. In fact, I hate sitting down. Um, I, I, if I sit down for, you know, an hour, I'm really agitated and need to get up. Um, so I uh, run in the morning a little bit with my dog. Um, about 15, 20 minutes, but it's more like a run, stop, run, stop. So it's, I don't count it as exercise. It's just waking me up. Um, I do a little bit of yoga in the morning before that, uh, like a Tibetan yoga for about five minutes. Uh, and then I work out uh, on my exercise bike. Uh, I have an indoor bike. And I also, a few times a week, I will do weights with not weights, but they're bands, exercise bands. And I absolutely love them because I, for years, I carried weights with me where because I've moved a lot. And every time there was a house move, my weights would be, you know, weighing the luggage down. So I got these, oh, I got these bands, um, which they're just fantastic. And they have a different um, strength and you can add strength or you can take it away. And I hook it into the door and I, I use them. 
uh, about three times a week. Great, thanks. And there's another question. How many meals per day do you eat and do you fast? No, I don't like fasting. I, I couldn't fast. The only fasting I do is at night. Um, I finish my eating very early. I eat dinner at about five. So I'm finished eating before six and I don't eat breakfast until about 7.30 in the morning. So that's my fast. Um, and I normally have three meals, three really good meals. And um, at, mo at most snacking, I would probably have um, fruit, like watermelon, it's now watermelon season, which is lovely. Um, and I'll have that about four o'clock. And but I, I when I'm cooking, I, I just snack all the time while I'm cooking. And my favorite thing to snack on is the stalk of broccoli. <laughs> I know it's a, it's an unusual snack, but it's just it's delicious. And so I have to leave extra broccoli out on the countertop while I'm cooking so that I can eat it while I'm cooking. And tomatoes as well. I snack on those. Nice. And Let's check the questions. Da, da, da. Oh, the recording, Anjali, the recording is available immediately after the show, but you have to go to YouTube. And if you're watching on Facebook, I really recommend you consider watching on YouTube because we have a very active community there. We call them the Zoomunity because on Facebook, I can't really see your comments unless I jump screens. But with YouTube, it's all right there with all the people watching, all the show notes, the recipe. So if you're on Facebook, consider going to YouTube uh, because then you see everything. All right. Uh, pretty much ready and my bread is also luckily enough is also ready are there any foods you just can't get in the netherlands that you wish you could that are plant-based um i don't think so not that i can think of but i things are just very expensive here and i do like to have organic as much as i can but there's just such a difference in the price for organic and it's just unfortunate that the things I buy the most of, which is fruits and vegetables, are really horrendously expensive. So, but I can't think of any food as such that I can't get. Yeah, I, there's always, there's everything I need. Nice. Right, so I'm going to take the bread out now to show you. And this is also finished, good timer. I'll try not to burn myself again. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put this down a little bit so you can have a look. So that's just out of the oven. Oh my God, that looks delicious. Um, uh, um, Amy wants to know if you're on Instagram. I am, but I'm not very good with Instagram. I, I have an account, but I don't use it, to be honest. I'm most active on Facebook. And I now, thanks to Elaine, I have a wonderful um, baby website, which is just new. And uh, so people can get in touch with me through there. Uh, Susanna wants to know if you have farmer's markets in the Netherlands. Oh, there are in the cities, um, but unfortunately here, the, you know, here every Friday in our local car park, I only live in a village with, with about 3,000 people, and um, there's a cheese market, uh, as all over the Netherlands there's cheese shops, um, so here there's a, a cheese market every Friday, but the, the major markets, and there are a lot of, you know, organic markets, um, but they're in the major cities, which I'm not really that close to. So this is what the bread looks like. And you can, like I say, you can either slice it this way or slice it here. And then or, just or just eat the whole thing like I would. Why bother <laughs> slicing? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yes. So I'm just going to pop that on there. I will actually cut it. And... I'm using this knife rather than a bread knife, you know, the serrated knife. I, because I love mashed pear in the morning, I, and I'm not very careful with knives. So <laughs> my, I broke my bread knife mashing a pear. So 
I don't have a bread knife at the moment. So I'm just going to cut it so you get to see what the inside looks like. Do you put anything on it? Yeah, I will put mashed banana or I put a little bit of tahini. I love tahini. Or I don't, I don't have, I personally don't, I used to eat a lot of peanut butter until I went SOS free and now literally a tiny, maybe half a teaspoon. So I might put that on it or just some um, sugar-free jam or whatever, or maybe just a slice of pear or something like that, or just as it is. If, if there's raisins or something in it, you don't need anything on it. It's just like having a scone. Sounds fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna dish up my um, buckwheat. You can see the amount of food is in this. And this, I'm not kidding, this is going to, this will be for two people. <laughs> it looks like to the normal person, this would probably feed four people, but it will feed two. There's a question. Do you know Sadie from Pickup Limes? Sadie from? Pickup Limes. I think uh, somebody on YouTube. No. Cute name. No, Sadie from Pickup Lines. No. no. no Mona says, is peanut butter bad for SOS free? I make my own. I, I, I mean, if it's unsalted, it technically is SOS free, right? I, yeah, but it's quite high in fat and, and it can be oily. Um, even though I, you know, when I buy it and when I buy it for my daughter, I pour the oil out and then it gets a little bit dry and crumbly. Um, but I just, I was eating so much of it because, you know, I'm vegan and peanut butter is vegan, but I was re eating too much of it. So really the high fat content, I think, was contributing as well. And peanuts, of course, is if, you know, you may um, not have an allergy to nuts, but have an allergy to or sensitivity to peanuts. Yeah, peanuts are a legume. I, if you have a nutra milk machine, you can make your own in like a minute. That would be taking up more space in my kitchen. Or... That's true because it's pretty big, but somebody in my audience is going to win one very soon. We just had a contest for my 1000th episode and we're just reviewing all the videos. So somebody's going to get one. So how I like to finish this off, and I think someone's going to wake up in a second when she... Oh, well, there she is. There you are. There you are. Oh, she had to have some cucumber. Okay, so I top it with some red onion. I absolutely love red onion. Normally, I would top it with, uh, I do sprouting. I sprout mainly mung beans, um, but I've only just started this uh, batch, so there wasn't any ready. So I, I love to top with red onion. So that will be my kind of raw plus cucumber. And um, I think, wow, I just have cucumber with everything because I love it. And this, uh, what I'm using to slice the cucumber with, this is very uh, common in Holland for uh, cheese. It's a cheese slicer. And the use it gets from me is to cut my cucumber. So it literally, I just put the cucumber. So. And it makes perfect sliced cucumber. So I will put some of that on the side. That's a cool way to use a cheese slicer. Yeah, it's the only way to use a cheese slicer. And of course my cashew parmesan. Yummy. And of course, this can go in the fridge and it will stay good for, you know, a week, maybe two. And then a sprinkling of. I love that plate that you, the small plate with the, with the stripes. Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. That's my buckwheat pasta style cashew parmesan. Delicious. Yes. So that's going to be dinner tomorrow.
maybe even breakfast. No, I, I wouldn't eat it for breakfast, but it will definitely be dinner tomorrow or even lunch. Well, it looks, oh, look at your cute little dog. Did she, did she miss the cucumber? Oh no, she woke up and I gave her some. She can have some more. Yeah. Oh. What time is it in the Netherlands? Uh, right now it's eight o'clock in the evening. Oh, so it's past dinner time. So that's why you're eating it tomorrow. Yes, it'll be tomorrow because I, I finish eating around or well, just before six o'clock because I go to bed at nine um, every night. and I have to be in bed at nine. I just it's my I, I have a sleep schedule and it, I just it works for me. It works really well because I get up really early. I hear you. I love being in bed at nine. You know, before I moved from the desert, my friend took me to Chris Rock's concert and it started at nine, which means it started at 10 and I, I could barely keep my eyes. Oh, open. no, I'm I'm already falling asleep a little bit by about 830. I'm, I'm winding down and ready to to go. I love going to bed. Early. Well, this was a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, Colette. And Thank just uh, would like to know in case anybody's interested in attending the Main Street Vegan Academy in October, what would you say to them? I would say do it. Don't even think about it. Use the, the coupon, uh, the discount coupon, and uh, just do it because there, no matter for whatever reason that you want to do it, um, there'll always be, a, a, when you come out of it, there'll always be another reason that you should have done it. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Chef AJ. It's been an honor. Thank you so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when we have another wonderful graduate of the Main Street Vegan Academy. Her name is Ann Redinger, and she's going to be cooking.